Um, now, in addition to your uh, duties as a New Jersey attorney, you also have uh, some uh, political offices you hold, one of which is that you're the surrogate of the county. Is that correct? A surrogate of Burlington County, yes. Now, how does one become a surrogate? Uh, it's the only elected judgeship uh, in the state of New Jersey, and it's a, uh, a constitutional officer's uh, position. Mm -hmm. The election is every five years unless someone steps down. <coughs> no. I guess that this is, when you say it's constitutional, this is preserved in the 1947 state constitution. That's correct. And did, is this a, a, a position that predated the, the 1947 constitution? Yes, it did. So this is kind of like a holdover from a bygone era, I guess. Oh, yeah. Because there was a big move in the 1947 constitution to get politics completely out of the judiciary. And that's still a very strong uh, sentiment uh, in our judiciary today. But you have to be involved in politics because that's how you get your job, right? Yeah, that's correct. So do you actually go out there and campaign? And uh, I'm permitted to campaign during the year that I'm up for election. Right. And do you have to go out and uh, solicit uh, political campaigns and things like that to pay for advertising and things of that nature? Uh, I do, uh, but not, not as much as if I was running for the state legislature. Now, normally, do you have somebody actually running against you for the position of surrogate? Well, I'm the uh, – my predecessor – uh, was in the position for 40 years. Right. Uh, so I always say I'm the new surrogate after a 40-year term of uh, a, of a Republican. I ran as a Democrat, uh, but this year I'm running. Uh, I changed parties in February. Uh, I've always been a uh, a conservative Democrat, and now I'm a moderate Republican. All right. Well, good luck to you in the election. One of the things you mentioned, and I, and I want all of the people who are watching this to understand, is that the surrogate is actually a court, just yes. like the Superior Court is. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually called, my office is actually called the surrogate's court. And, and part of my duties is to act as a judge in that uh, I uh, a approve uh, the appointment of... Uh, Administrators, if there is no will, and if there is a will, then I issue uh, papers of, uh, uh, I actually approve whomever was named in the will as an executor or executrix. Okay. Uh, we still use the old term executor for a male, executrix for a female, administrator for a male, administratrix for a female, but for our purposes, any time I use the word executor, I'm, I'm talking about male or female. So if we're doing pleadings, we should be listing the uh, the appropriate person, either executor, executrix, things like yes, that nature? Yes, but, but uh, in this day and age, eventually our legislature will just do away with the, the second nomenclature for a female. Now, uh, one of the duties that the surrogates have in New Jersey um, is to be kind of like a trustee in those situations where you have children, for example, who come into money, let's say as a result of a personal injury settlement or something of that nature. Can you talk a little bit about how that works? Yeah, we, we have the commingled, our office is responsible for the commingled minors funds. And uh, a lot of your lay people, people not involved in litigation are unaware of the fact that if a minor gets a recovery in a lawsuit, a minor being someone under 18, right. they do not get the money until they reach their majority, nor does the parent or parents or guardian gets the money. The money is put in our commingled account where it will draw interest until the, uh, the individual turns 18 or reaches his or her majority, at which point we then release the money. Now, that being said, that fund can be, be tapped for certain uh, uh, appropriate uh, withdrawals. For example, uh, if you have a student going to a private school and tuition money is needed, uh, the, uh, actually the guard, parent guardian would apply to us for uh, the ability to get some money to pay the tuition. Once they apply, they have to show that they are financially unable to meet the tuition charge, and it would be an extreme burden on them financially. So they put this in an affidavit. Uh, we then submit it to our chancery judge mm -hmm. in Burlington County is Judge Michael Hogan. He then will either approve it based on the affidavit or hold the hearing to see if they, in fact, 
are in uh, extreme straits as far as their financial and economic situation. And once he approves it, uh, and, and included in the documentation would have to be <clears throat> something from the school indicating what the tuition payment is. Once approved, a check is then cut by the bank to the institution, not, not to the parent. And, but the responsibility is upon the parent to come to our office, pick up the check, and then uh, deliver it to the school. Can we just kind of walk through a, 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 a hypothetical personal injury case? Let's say we have a child, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit more dramatic than it should be, playing over to the neighbor's house and they're playing with a, an airsoft pistol or something. The guest's child is shot in the eye, all right? There's a claim made against the host's uh, insurance carrier, all right? And the case gets settled, let's say, I don't know what you would get for an eye, but let's say for the sake of argument it's $100,000, all right? Now, there's a personal injury attorney involved in this. He has to be paid. So there'll be, out of the $100,000 recovery, how would that typically get split up? In other words, how much would go to the attorney? How much would go to the officer of the surrogate? That type of thing. Uh, with a minor, uh, the attorney would be entitled to, uh, normally to 25% as opposed to the uh, 33 and a third percent normally charged for now That's by statute, that's capped at 25% on yes. the normal? Yes. Can it ever go above that amount? Yes, yes. Uh, you can, in, in any personal injury case, you can petition the court uh, due to the amount of work put into the case, due to the uh, uniqueness of the situation, uh, you can petition the court to have that increased. All right, so let's say in this particular instance, um, just to keep it simple, let's say there's no medicals or things like that. Um, 25000 then goes to the attorney. Does he get paid through the surrogate or does he get paid through the insurance company? How does that no, work No, he gets out? paid through the insurance company. All right, and the balance of the recovery, would that be remitted directly by the insurance company to the surrogate? Yes. Okay. Now, if the child's, let's say, 15 years old for the sake of argument, there's at least 36 months you're going to be holding on to the money. Correct. Who's responsible for investing that money and kind of being the fiduciary for it? Uh, every, Dece every December, uh, banks are, are selected by our assignment judge. And, and there's the, the, a bank it, who is primary, there's a bank who is secondary, and then we also have a bank that is uh, tertiary in the event we need three different banks due to the uh, constraints by the, uh, the federal insurance. So these, uh, I, I think uh, the, the main we're look, looking for here is conservatism in the sense that there's no risky investments going on here. The money no. has to be basically insured, very little or no risk associated with the loss of the money. The only thing is you pay off, there's a trade-off on that, and that's the, the, re, the rate of return is going to be minimal, I would suspect. Yes, and uh, actually the assignment judge usually looks at First of all, what rate of interest the bank is going to give us, and secondly, uh, what's the history of the bank? Okay, but oh, these are all going to be in insured accounts in any event. Is yes, that correct. Yes. In the unlikely event that a that the juvenile had seven hundred fifty thousand dollar recovery, I suspect that the assignment judge would want to break it up to spread the risk, so to speak, among several banks. Yes. So that the recovery be completely insured all the way through. Yes. Is that, is that, yeah. Now, what's your role in, in, the, in the banking aspect of it? Do you have any function to do that as surrogate? Uh, not really. I mean, we, we of course, deposit the checks uh, in, the, in the accounts. Right. But the actual choice of the bank is up to the, up to the assignment judge? Yes. 